Sports Network starts in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Vision they losing their sight here. Time to send the world a message they might hear. Like meek meals, I'm making it quite clear. I'm chasing my dreams and fighting my nightmares. I'm going real hard. I'm talking words you understand. I'm talking real bar. You going everywhere you know. I'm talking real far. Yeah, it's time to raise a toast to this thing to the lot of most. As I go from coast to coast, I'm talking north side. I'm talking south side. I'm talking east side. I'm talking west side. I'm going worldwide. I'm going worldwide. I'm going worldwide. I'm going worldwide. Yeah, it's time to let you know how I spit it when I flow. When I go with light a fuse and I set to let it blow. I'm talking worldwide. I'm going worldwide. I'm going worldwide. I'm going worldwide. Time to check my status and the GOAT is what it be And you know I'm over 30 so my level is a G And I may be from the hood but I'm way beyond these streets And my pockets hate a diet so they always down to eat Even though they screaming fame and it's always spelling me And I'll never hang it up till my mission is complete And I'm looking at you haters I suggest you take a seat Cause it's all funny game to a killer show of steam This is for them cats that be screaming homies Claiming that you're real but we know you're phony now I'm chilling with my sons, they my one and only Like the Triller Brothers, yeah, we screaming lions only yeah, Step into this den, I welcome all who will dare Never met a David, tell me whom shall I fear Gotta rep the nation, black and gold is what I wear If you look to your left, to your right, I'm everywhere I'm talking north side, I'm talking south side I'm talking east side, I'm talking west side I'm going worldwide, I'm going worldwide I'm going worldwide, I'm going worldwide Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Rocks and More Sports Network. We are here for the 2020 MLK Showcase, and this is the main event as the St. Benedict's Prep Gray Bees will be taking on the Bishop Laughlin Lions in the premier matchup of the night. Travis Newton with, here with Ken Avocati, and we're getting ready to get things started for the premier matchup. Before we go ahead and get started, we're just a few seconds from tip-off. We're going to introduce you to both teams. Getting things started with the St. Benedict Bees. We'll be leading off with number three, EJ Evans. Number four, Ada Takunbo Bakari. Number 12, Bara Njai. Number four, Monir Hima. And number 24, Nicholas Black. And then on the other side, out of Brooklyn, New York, the four and seven Bishop Laughlin Lions, starting with number zero, Maurice Doby. Number one, Taj Childs. Number four, Shahid Bilal. Number five, Jalen Flowers. And number 15, Chris Peters. So Ken, you got a chance to talk with both coaches on both sides. What information did you get for us to start this game off? Well, so one thing I learned is that uh, one of the teams, they're basically going to uh, be kind of playing a lot of people on this one. Um, yeah, and then enough, basically, and all of them, they're all definitely going to play a tough and hard to beat. Um, one of the teams, they're they're having uh, Bishop Laughlin. They it's it's a bit of excuse me, it's a bit emotional for them because uh, one of their one member of their coaching staff has been like hospitalized for much of the season. So um, a lot of the energy, a lot of the positive energy that goes around here, it's for their coach. These guys are playing for something greater than just a winning record. And what can you tell us now for the other team? So for the other team, um, so one of them, is, they're basically just going to, they have some like big people on there. They have one person was being described as a bit of like a bully and they said that it's just gonna be playing hard and just being tough to beat. Well, we do love a little bully ball here on the Roxmore Sports Network. We are coming uh, following a great matchup in the game prior between Butler High School and Penn Hills. It was really a, just a heavyweight bout, just each team throwing haymakers, body blows back and forth. It ended up being Butler reigning victorious at the end. So we just have a few more moments here as we're getting ready to get things started. We'd like to welcome you all to the Rocks and More Sports Network, the second annual MLK Showcase Stand Against Violence. This is the final game of the night, game nine of nine. It's been a long day. It's 
What time is it now? Just past probably 9.30. It's time for me to get a watch. That's Just what past it is. 9.30. 9 we are not tired yet. We've been here since 8.30 just grinding away. Humble brag, but we're ready to go here on the Roxmore Sports Network. We thank everyone who's been with us throughout the day. But you're going to catch a good match up here, a couple of elite basketball teams. And first thing right off the bat that I've noticed is that Bishop Laughlin, a little bit on the smaller side as far as height goes, but they had some athletes I saw on their team when they were warming up. And then St. Benedict on the other side, they do have more of that height, but they can shoot as well. Don't get it wrong. They have some skilled players to go along with that size. Of course, these two come from neighboring states, Newark, New Jersey for St. Benedict, and then Brooklyn, New York for Bishop, Loff Bishop Laughlin. The Lions of Bishop Laughlin, coached by Ed Gonzalez, and the Bees of St. Benedict, coached by Mark Taylor. So, Ken, you've seen a lot of basketball today. What are some of the highlights that you've observed throughout the evening? Um, the previous game. <laughs> that, previous that, was, game. that was largely a highlight. And actually, that, that one's interesting clear where uh, like you you saw both teams and you figured okay these guys are good and I'm sure both of those teams you had a lot of people who were definite division one prospects on that but uh, that didn't exactly make it like the best game of the day the previous game there weren't like as many like D top D1 prospects or anything that one was way closer and almost like a better show of talent in a way yeah and that's the thing about tournaments like this you can have those elite high-level teams but a lot of the times what you get with that is elite level players as individuals and not much of a team game, a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. That last game, we saw the epitome of team basketball between Butler and Penn Hills. It, it doesn't get any better than that. The passing, the shooting, just the, the cohesiveness between teammates was an absolutely great thing to see. And just showing you that because there's no Division One prospects on the court doesn't mean you can't see great basketball. Absolutely. So we are just seconds away from getting started. And it's hard to tell from your camera angle. Hard to tell from your camera angle, but a uh, definite size advantage goes to the Bs of St. Benedict and the St. Benedict team. Players from all over the country. And we're just excited to get things started here on the Roxamore Sports Network. Game nine of nine, the showpiece to end the night here on the second day of the MLK Classic. One thing to add, we just had uh, all the players, like the starting lineups, walk onto the court. But one thing I learned about uh, about Bishop Laughlin is that they will, they plan to use all of the people. So even the people who are not on their bench, I heard there are some very key playmakers, and we're definitely going to see them later. St. Benedict in white, Bishop Laughlin in purple, no contest on the jump ball. They went ahead and let them have it. So here we go, the final game of the Saturday showcase here from Woodland Hills High School. Let's get it going. Already seeing good ball movement early on from St. Benedict's, working deep into the possession. Backdoor cut, now pulling it back out. They will have the shot clock for this game, I believe. We're gonna start things off with a three-point attempt by EJ Evans. He can't get that one to go. Slapped out of bounds, possession goes to the Lions. So let's see what this Bishop Laughlin team has, a heralded team. They're gonna have a fight an uphill battle today when it comes to their height differential, but definitely seeing a lot of speed early on. And before the bucket goes, a traveling violation, first turnover for either team, sends it right back to St. Benedict's. Now you were just talking about height differential. Who do you think, who, do, who can you tell is the tallest person on the, t on the court right now? For which team? Eat both teams, all of them. You can tell there's one single well, person. Number 23 over here is head over here, heels taller than everyone else that's been in the gym all day. So He's seven feet tall, that's yeah. why. And yeah, no surprise, definitely uh, a towering human being on the court right there for St. Benedict's. Seven foot tall, a senior, definitely has a lot of potential to make it to the next level of college basketball, along with many of his teammates. So both teams scoreless here in the early goings of the first half. Benedict finds it inside, but another turnover as they have it tipped away. Bishop Laughlin fast on the break, 100 meter dash to the ball. Both teams on the ground, and we're gonna get a jump ball position. will go to Bishop Laughlin. 
That one almost looked dangerous for a moment. I thought uh, I thought one of those guys was about to take a knee to the face right there. And we've had some discrepancies all day about that shot clock. And once again, we're going to get some questioning of it. And he's going to continue to fight his cause. It appears that Coach Mark Taylor here does not want a shot clock, and he's pretty emphatic about it. So I don't think that'll change anything. We're still going to have a shot clock, but it'll be Bishop Laughlin ball and sideline inbounds. Shahid Bilal Ooh. will be bringing it all in once we get back to action. I hope he just keeps a uh, pretty pretty uh, low demeanor here. I, we, I don't think we've had any coach get called on a technical foul yet today, have we? We have not. We, we have not seen a technical foul. I wouldn't plan on a seeing one. This is, it's, a, it's a showcase tournament, not much on the line here besides just some competitive nature. And just to, uh, just to, for those of you who may not be able to see too easily on uh, TV, basically the uh, head coach of uh, St. Benedict right now, he's, uh, he, he, in a way, he's pretty, he's kind of like ticked off about it. But um, what, he's just more like, oh, I, I just want to know the rules because I didn't think that there would be any kind of shot clock in a, in a Pennsylvania game like this. It looks like things have uh, finally been explained for him now. Um, so... I guess things are about to chill so out after, just a little. Uh, after a discussion, we're still going to have a shot clock, but just less time on the shot clock now. We're moving to 24 seconds instead of 30. So, so they're able to do that. Yeah. Huh. Whole lot of talk for a whole lot of nothing. Can you explain? Do you, are, are you familiar enough to like explain how they can do that, basically? Um, so basically, the rule is so with Whippy Old Basketball and PIAA men's basketball, there's absolutely no shot clock. So I can understand the thinking here by Coach Mark Taylor thinking, we're playing in Pennsylvania, so we should play by Pennsylvania rules. But uh, I believe they're just trying to make it an equal playing field. And with games like this, with athletes like this, as the seven-footer easily dunks that one away, but with games like this and teams like this, with athletes at such a high level, they want, don't want people just rotating the ball around the perimeter, wasting time. So they put the shot clock in to essentially make you take shots, make you use that clock to get higher scoring games is basically the result of a shot clock. Right, okay, yeah, and that, that ends up enhancing the viewer experience yeah. a little bit, because we, we want to see the ball moving. These are pretty good players, pretty tall players in the case of one of them, and we, we want to see what they can do. And uh, and clock management, it can be interesting to watch, but, uh, but at the same time, it is nice to have that shot clock as a viewer a lot of so times. So some fancy footwork, snaking in and out of the defense, and now going to the line will be number zero, Mar Maurice Doby trying to get the first points of the day for Bishop Laughlin. And we do want to emphasize Monir Hima, seven foot tall. We just saw him dunk it, only getting about five inches off the ground. Doesn't take much at that height. <laughs> so Bishop Laughlin still scoreless after missing the first free throw. See if they can buy their first point here. Maurice Doby gets the Lions on the board and now has some full court pressure. Trying to get a turnover, throwing it off the leg, but the ball didn't go anywhere, so possession will stay with Stain Benedicts. They gotta be running close to a 10 second here to get the ball over the line. Close call, but they do get it. So St. Benedict's, we've seen them show patience early on on the offensive side. There's no change here. Now going inside, drawing the foul. That foul will go on number four, Shahid Bilal. Baseline inbounds coming up for the Bees. So the first substitution of the game, Bara Njai, I'm sure, possibly a brother for the uh, other Njai on their roster here. And that was just two points for St. Benedict. So you can definitely see that as a problem with Bishop Laughlin struggling to deal with this height of St. Benedict's.
Whole lot of speed though for Bishop Lofton. They showing it running around the perimeter, tosses up the shot wildly. Rebound by St. Benedict's and here they go. Two on one on the offensive side and an arid pass gives it right back to the Lions. Pull up, jumper, stop, drop, can't get it to go. And this Bishop Laughlin team, it's not really a great adjective to describe someone, but they're pesky. You can have just hands active everywhere, like little gnats going at you. Oh, yeah. And I mean that in the best of ways. They're exhibiting some great defense early on, but just a very pesky team just in your face. Well, if that'll, uh, if that's going to allow them to translate it a little bit into uh, some points and in terms of uh, at least stomping St. Benedict from scoring, because right now it's a five-point gap. I actually didn't quite expect this too, too early. So Christian Joe checking into the game for Bishop Laughlin. You know what they say, never trust a man with two first names. And he has his shot blocked on his first attempt. Ball back to St. Benedict's. You know, I've actually never heard that saying before. Yeah. It's the first time for everything as going to the line now will be number three for the Bees, EJ Evans, trying to get his first points of the evening. So a six point lead early on for the home team in white, St. Benedict's Bees. Unable to extend that lead on the first shot. During this free throw, we'd like to introduce the sponsor for this game, Will Banks Consulting Group. Is your athlete struggling to see a career path after graduation? If your child lacks direction, career exploration coaching can help. Career experts at the Wilbanks Consulting Group help your athlete identify their strengths beyond sports for a lifetime of success and career satisfaction. Call 1-833-924-9675 today for your free consultation. Here comes St. Benedict's once again, rising up with the right hand and throwing it down is number four, Adedekumpo Bakare. And quickly a timeout as Bishop Laughlin is falling behind quickly to this tall and experienced St. Benedict's B's team. So currently we are here in timeout, but uh, Wilbanks Consulting Group, I know we just talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, I don't know, I've never, have you ever had to use any kind of like consulting for any kind of career or anything like that? I have not, I, I usually find my career myself, but I have, I know the uh, owner of Wilbanks Consulting Group, and it's really a great cause of what they're trying to do there, preparing young adults for their future in the professional field especially for athletes. Of course, not every athlete is going to go pro and make millions of dollars, so it's always great to have a backup plan and uh, really just preparing athletes for life after the court. Life after the court where they'll still be pretty competitive. You can, uh, I hear you all the time from like my parents, like you can tell who was uh, previously like a college athlete or something because they, they have like a certain drive in them that you oftentimes may not even see in a lot of other people. Yeah, and that's one of the big things on a lot of uh, applications. It says looking for sports-minded individual. That means someone that's not going to give up at the first sight, someone that's going to work hard for what they want. And that's, that's what you get being an athlete. It teaches you a lot of life lessons that aren't really about that sport when it comes to the end of it. A looping layup for the Bees, or sorry, for Bishop Laughlin as they turn it right back over, giving it to the Lions. And now just some back and forth action and a two on no one now going up with both hands for the slam. I, I feel like uh, Bishop Laughlin is a bit outsized here right now. And I have a feeling that won't be the last dunk we see as that one is swatted away emphatically. Possession will stay with the Lions. That was Ty Lord Johnson coming in there for the block. Shortest person on the court right now, but he got up to deny that one. as we wait for the ball to be thrown in. Right 
So we'll see if Bishop Laughlin can add some more points to their totals. They continue to go strong to the hoop. They might need to start taking some jump shots from outside because they're amongst the trees over there. Back and forth, nice passing. And now a substitution for the Bees. Now checking in is Zaba Bangala, the 6'8 senior. So Bishop Laughlin still looking for an answer. The Lions grossly undersized. But we're not gonna take anything away from them. They came here to play and they have been playing hard in the early goings of this first period. Corner three off the side of the backboard, but an offensive rebound and just look, that's impossible down there. That kid's 6'3", and he's among 6'8", 6'7", and 7 foot. Oh, and look and at this strong Finally, take. we got one. And when I talk about learning lessons outside the court, there's always going to be someone that's bigger and better than you, but if you work hard, you can always make something happen. My metaphors are coming true within this game. And now the big man going for the slam once again. Couldn't finish it. Ball back to the Lions and dribbling out of bounds. We'll send it right back to the Bees on the turnover. So Bishop Laughlin having to go into the backcourt to regain possession of another foul called. This foul is going to be called on Bengala, so not yet in the bonus, but we will get a baseline inbounds for the Lions. Inbounding the ball is Taj Childs. Going out Piat beyond the arc to inbound that one. An 11-3 lead for St. Benedict's, 153 remaining in the first period. Some fancy dribbling, now kicking it out. Thought about the three-point attempt, but shuffled his feet. So another turnover for Bishop Laughlin, and they're really just struggling to get some offensive production going. Ultimately, it's so much of it just seems to be a size thing. Like all these St. Benedict's players, they're not only taller, but their reach is all really, really good. Yeah, definitely some impressive wingspans. And coming off the bench now is 6'7", Dorde Mitrovic, or sorry, Mitrovic, making his first appearance in today's game. Mitrovic working it around the perimeter. Now they're gonna try a three-point attempt. Nice looking shot, but just long. Why not try another? Puts it up, in and out, just not his day. And here comes Bishop Laughlin once again, running fast, blocked away. That's the height right there. That, that is it right there. He just, he just swatted that down casually. Yeah, and that's just something you can't teach. Having that advantage is clearly going to help you out down in the paint, especially on the fast break. Just use your length. You don't have to use any body. It won't be a foul. Just use those long arms and send it right back where it came from. That three ball attempt, long offensive rebound for the Lions. Good job getting him to pump fake, but still return to Cinder from Monir Hima. Nice in and out move, takes it to the hoop, draws the foul, and going to the line will be Bara Njai. So 11 to three, the lead here for St. Benedict's. St. Benedict's traveling all the way from Newark, New Jersey with an eight and two record, looking to improve to nine and three on the season. And it's interesting to uh, see St. Benedict uh, from Newark, New Jersey, and then uh, Bishop Laughlin from Brooklyn. So it makes me wonder, have these teams actually like met before, uh, being that they're not too, too far away from each other? Um, if you've been to Newark, New Jersey, uh, you can make it into the boroughs of New York City relatively easily. Geography with Ken. What? Geography with Ken. 
Let's see, where, where are there other, uh, are there any basketball named cities out there? I'm not sure. No. I'm gonna have to like ask my uh, Google Assistant or something in front of me. So St. Benedict's milking this clock, now taking it inside as Njai blocked way out of bounds. Looks like uh, number 13 is pulled a number 23 there. Number 13 of uh, Bishop Laughlin doing a very casual block, just like number 23 disrespectfully did to some of Bishop Laughlin's players earlier. Yeah, it's Matt Asela for Bishop Laughlin with time expiring. Njai gonna put it up, nothing going for either team. So a bit of a slow first half. It's been all St. Benedict's as we end the first quarter of play. They lead 12 to five. And we'd like to introduce you to some of our sponsors for tonight's event. We'll get things started with Wilson's Night Out. Come to Wilson's Night Out, not just for a night out, but for an experience of Caribbean cuisine. Happy hour, Monday through Friday, 5 to 7 p.m. with specialty drinks. Looking for that certain room to host parties, meetings, social events, receptions, repasts, and more, come out to Wilson's Night Out. And we're, we'd like to thank Berhern and Ernstberger. Do you need a law firm in Pittsburgh? Have you or a member of your family suffered a serious injury? Did an insurance company refuse your claim? You may need help from a proven lawyer who will work for you. Call attorney Dan Ernstberger at 412-391-2515. We'd also like to introduce you listings from Maggie Jason. Looking for a realtor to work hard for you, you found her. Maggie Jason's listings encompass staging, professional photography, information boxes with top grade promo cards, open houses, and target marketing. To learn more about her featured listings, call 412-999-9528. And we'd also like to uh, acknowledge SOAR. They know the rules of the game, but do they know the rules of life? SOAR Youth Empowerment teaches your teen athletes the rules of life. For more information, visit www.soarcoachingacademy.com or call 609-837-7237. SOAR, S-O-A-R. So we start the second quarter. Like I mentioned, a very slow first quarter and just a seven point lead for St. Benedict's, although it seems like they've really dominated this game. They're gonna try another three point play off the mark and really struggling from the field here for St. Benedict's is Adetokumbo Bakare. Let's see if Bishop Laughlin can really get into their offense now. They're going against the 2 3 zone, which really makes sense for St. Benedict's with all this length. They're going to have to be able to hit the three point shot if they want to stay in. This one is going way up high and wanting a goaltending, but they won't get it. All right, right now uh, we have Bishop Laughlin on defense, but uh, one thing I wanted to point out is one of their one of their players currently on the field or on the court, uh, number 13. Uh, he they intentionally don't start him, but what they said is that even though he's only about uh, he's relatively small, about like six feet tall, he has a seven foot one wingspan, and they use that kind of as like a hidden weapon on him because uh, it's it's deceptive, and many of his opponents don't really realize that. And I didn't notice it to begin this game until you said something. Yeah, he, now but, you can see like wow. how <laughs> and he, you, he just has his arms by his side right now, and like you, you're not gonna realize it until uh, until the ball is basically smacking you back in the face after he's casually blocked it. Young man's name is Assad Matasela. I'm glad you did your research. That is very impressive, and now I can't unsee it. So thank you for that. <laughs> yep. Once I learn it, you have to learn it too. So a 10-point lead now for St. Benedict's. Bishop Laughlin just nothing cooking on the offensive side as they miss another three-point shot. And St. Benedict's coming fast on the break. And now an offensive foul called, and in disbelief is St. Benedict's. Maybe a bit of acting, but... Yeah, that was a good sell, actually. That was a good enough sell. Checking in now for the Bees, number 22, Ingo and Duham. If you're looking for the full name of number 22, Stefan Aurelio Ingetap Ingo and Duham. So a mouthful. 
as we'll just stick with Induum for the rest of this game. Nice look inside, the pump fake, and no chance against seven foot tall. Now here comes the Bees, trying to go deep into his bag of dribble moves, now going inside, pump fake, and the easy lay-in. Really just a silly foul there, reaching in with no need. That's already five fouls on both teams, actually make it six fouls for St. Benedict's. So we're just a couple away from the bonus and we're only at the six minute, 16 second mark here in the second period of play. So the B's gonna, using those long wingspans. Enforcing the issue on that pass off the mark. Stolen away, going back to St. Benedict's. Kick inside, raising right high above the rim and luckily tipped in. So 19 to five, now the score. Floater, teardrop, gets it to go. So a little bit something going now for the Lions. A nice floater gives them seven points. They still trail by 12 in a blocking foul. We'll send in the substitute now. Hey, can you, uh, let's check the height of number 21 here on Yeah, uh, number 21 checking in. And we have the wrong number here, so. Uh, he I believe like this is Nicholas Black checking in at 6'8". So 6'8 coming off the bench. That, that, make, that makes sense, because he barely seemed any bit shorter than, uh, than a seven foot tall guy who literally just walked off. Correction, Charles Lowe the name of number 21, making his first appearance in today's game. I'm not sure if you could pick that up from our feed, but Coach Mark Taylor for the Bees, emphatic uh, with his team right now, even though they're ahead by 12. Yeah, you think that they were like getting crushed right now, but it, this is like some other passion. Bishop Laughlin in the purple and yellow. Get a high ball screen, thought about the three, now taking it inside, nice pass down low, but couldn't handle it. And here comes St. Benedict's on the run once again, pushing it ahead, and just out of the outstretched reach of his teammate, a turnover, sends it out of bounds. We just literally heard a quote from the coach saying, stop being a baby. Uh, yes, he is not a happy camper right now. It's solid advice though, as Possession back to the bees. Solid advice. Motivational Monday. It's only Saturday though. And both of these teams just struggling right now, going back and forth, back and forth with turnovers, but still a 12-point lead, 19 to 7, with 4:30 remaining in the second period. And now coming in number 10, Everton Brown. And it's really interesting to see the evolution of basketball shorts throughout the years. Of course, in the 80s, 70s, and 80s, extremely short basketball shorts, almost uncomfortably short. And then through much of the 2000s and starting in the 90s with the Fab Fives, you started to see the baggy shorts a lot longer. And now we're getting back to the generation of short shorts, and we see that fully exhibited here by number 10. Has it rolled up about eight times and about as short as shorts can get. You know, I actually never noticed that. I didn't really notice that earlier until you brought it up now. And while we were on break here, we want to uh, take a moment to thank Maggie Jason's Listings. Looking for a realtor to work hard for you? You found her. Maggie Jason's Listings encompass staging, professional photography, information boxes with pro top grade promo cards, open houses, and target marketing. To learn more about her featured listings, call 412-999-9528. Maggie Jason's listings. And also, if you have something important to you in your life, you probably need insurance for it. So check out Assure America. Insurance comes with lots of questions. Assure America has the answers. Assure America can help protect your property, business, vehicles, and home. Be sure with Assure America. Go to assureamerica.com or call 412-489-58. 38 as we're back to the action here from Woodland Hills High School day two of the MLK 
Stand Against Violence showcase hosted by Woodland Hills High School, put together by athletic director Ron Corsi. Such a great cause, bringing teams from all around the country. Here to little old Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for what has been so far an amazing basketball tournament and still with a lot to come as we have basketball on Sunday and Monday after this game will be exactly halfway finished. And the Lions of Bishop Laughlin staying pesky, get the turnover there in an easy bucket. So now coming back, looking for the oop, puts it way up high, chases it and flushes it down. Nick Lowe going up top to throw that one. Nice kick out, the corner three up. Couldn't get the balance, the offensive put back off the mark as well. So lots of opportunities here for the Lions, but their possession will end with a traveling violation, giving it back to St. Benedict's. And yet another uh, rotation off the bench for Bishop Laughlin. Like they said, they're gonna try and use everyone this game. Checking in for the Lions is Justin Anderson. Anderson with a pretty impressive wingspan as well. A lot of lanky players here on this Bishop Laughlin team. So good ball movement and a patient possession here for Bishop Laughlin. They've got it back and forth a couple of times with some offensive rebounds. Unable to convert and now thought it was an offensive foul, but it's going to be a foul on St. Benedict's, catching him across the face. So now one and one for Bishop Laughlin. So three minutes left in the second period, a 23 to nine lead for St. Benedict's and you can tell that Coach Mark Taylor not dealing with mediocrity on his team. Yeah, he's uh, starting to almost say stuff that we can't really repeat here, so. <laughs> obviously a, a preparatory school just providing um, education for these student athletes to get them to the next level both in athletics and academically. So he has every right to be hard on him because he's just trying to get the best out of these players. It's coming fast. Number 12 met at the rim, and there's that wingspan meeting him high at the rim for the rejection. Now back comes St. Benedict's working it down into the post. Now far kick out, weaving through the defense and now turning it back over. Gonna be an over and back violation on St. Benedict's and Coach Mark Taylor is gonna lose his mind here in a second if his team doesn't pick up the intensity. Hey, you'd, almost, uh, you'd almost think that like he doesn't care that his team is literally doubling the score of the opponents. Um, he officially did drop a word that we can't say here. So uh, yeah, things are, even I'm, I'm almost getting stressed listening. <laughs> and technically we are a live streaming service, so we are not held to the same um, language barriers as the FCC does on television. But for, our, but yeah, <laughs> I'm hearing in my ear right now from the producer, the owner will hold you to those. Uh, That's we, very we, true. we know not to cross yeah, that line. We're not, just, no just for thanks. those at home, but. Yeah, there are, we, we know there are um, families watching and stuff. We're definitely gonna keep keep it mindful for you. Um, production wise, uh, fun fact, they do make sure that uh, that the audio levels of our microphones are low enough that you shouldn't really be able to hear a lot of what's going on around us, except for like buzzer related stuff. So uh, and that's gonna protect you viewers ears from anything um, bad. So the seven footer Monir Hima checking back in for St. Benedict's. He's gonna camp himself down in the post now, working back into that two, three zone are the bees of Burgundy and Black. And now a body foul with Bishop Laughlin in the bonus will send him back to the line for a pair of free throws. Two, 
So a chance to shorten the lead here. And hitting the first of the free throws is Christian Joe. So after all of this, still under a 10 point lead for St. Benedict's 23-15 with a minute 55 remaining in the first half. Messing around with the ball is Njai. He gives it up, now working it around the perimeter are the bees. Nice take inside and a strong finish by Njai. So back to a 10 point game here at the 2020 MLK Classic. We're in the, approaching the final minute of play in the first half. Bishop Laughlin, they're doing a good job fighting in this one, but they're fighting an uphill battle against Saints Benedicts, but just look at them working hard. You gotta give them credit. This team came to play and they're not letting up as that one's met at the backboard. And they're gonna call goaltending, saying that it hit the backboard first. And a goaltending call is about the only hope you have against that much height. Yeah, I really think we're about to reach our first coach to get a technical this time. A little bit of a sell there by number five. Didn't really work out in his favor. Number five of Bishop Laughlin. So a little bit of man-to-man -man full court pressure being brought in by Bishop Laughlin. A shooting foul will send Njai to the line for two. Once again, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us throughout the day here on the Roxmore Sports Network. We've been here from dusk to dawn, basically, and beyond. Having a great time at this tournament. You can tell the players learning a lot of great lessons uh, through the mantra, stand up against violence. Ron Corsi doing a great job introducing every team that comes in here. Uh, it's very troubling, but uh, on the inside of uh, the building right beside the gym, there's a wall with uh, people who have been subject to gun violence, not in the Pittsburgh area, but in this Woodland Hills School District area specifically. And it's extremely troubling to see the amount of faces. Whenever you put a face to the name, of course, it always makes something uh, more serious. So, And he takes every team and explains to them, this is the purpose of the tournament. We're here to spread awareness for this cause. And Athletic Director Ron Corsi just doing a really good job of bringing these teams together for a great cause is that won't be goaltending, just return to Cinder right back from the seven footer. And now trying to extend this second period, another foul called with 24.6 on the clock and a 12 point lead for St. Benedict's. And Barra and Jai will miss the first one. Looks to split the pair here on the second shot. And once again, Bishop Laughlin working that full lineup. Ronan McGoran, the junior, checking in now for the Lions. And Jai will end up missing both. Now here comes the Lions, 100 miles per hour. Oh, good job using the rim to defeat the defender, but unable to hit the shot. And now it'll be the Bees pulling up for one shot. 10 seconds left in Njai. Kick out, corner three, his time is about to expire, no good. Long rebound for the Lions and a half court heave. Won't go, didn't matter if it did. So at the end of the half, the score, 29-17 in uh, favor of the St. Benedict Bees. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break here and bring it right back for the Roxmore Sports Network Halftime Report.
me, ma'am. My sound wireless delivery, the line edition. Trouble can find anyone. At Frank Walker Law, we take the time to understand your situation and work tirelessly on your behalf. Hard-hitting representation when you need it the most. A real law firm getting real results. Welcome to Fit for Boxing Club. Here at Fit for Boxing, you'll find a fast, fun, and effective workout where you can burn up to 1,000 calories. Come try a free class at Fit for Boxing where beginners are always welcome. It's fun for the whole family, people of all ages. Old or young, it doesn't matter. In addition to our trainer-led workouts, we also offer private lessons, community fundraiser and team building events for local companies and more. Hi, my name's Mary. I've been a member at Fit4 Boxing for a little over a year now. If you need to get a good workout in, come to Fit4 Boxing and Rich and his staff will take care of each and every one of you. Fit for Boxing Club is located in Hampton Township, just outside of the city of Pittsburgh on William Flynn Highway. Come learn how to box and have fun. Call Fit for Boxing Club at 412-213-3584 or visit our website at www.fitforboxingclub.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Roxamore Sports Network Halftime Show. This show is brought to you by the Hill District Federal Credit Union. The Hill District Federal Credit Union has serviced the community for almost 50 years. Our purpose is to improve the financial health of our members so that we are not just surviving, but thriving. For information on how to become a member, please stop in at 2021 Center Avenue, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or give us a call at 412-281-0822. And we would like to thank Big Rock and RAC Cleaning. A five-star cleaning company rated by the people for both residential and commercial cleaning. If you're looking for regular maid service or even a one-time clean, office clean, or even a post-construction clean, look no further than Big Rock and RAC Cleaning, and they're the place for you. To inquire, you can call the number 412-203-8213. And finally, make sure you get your copy of the newly released single Worldwide by Buna and all digital stores for just $1. Go to Amazon, iTunes, Spotify, and more to get your copy of Worldwide today. 
Can we get that song to uh, play here on these speakers instead of what's playing right now? I know there's been like a lot of Lil Baby and uh, WAB and Swag Servant and stuff. Let's get uh, let's get this new single on the speakers. I don't know if they could handle that much heat though. <laughs> oh, that's that's that good good thinking. Yeah, you that can, you can might tell actually the get sparks. starting to uh, set in here. Hey, you guys aren't supposed to know that yeah. we're like tired of here. We're having the time of our lives here. <laughs> it's officially 10:20 p.m. We've been here since about 8:30, but we're not tired yet. Continuing to bring you all the live action here from Woodland Hills and the second annual MLK Showcase hosted by Woodland Hills High School. As we have the buzzer sound, which brings us into the second half of this game. It's a 29-17 lead for the St. Benedict's Bees. We'd like to thank you for joining us here on the Rock Some More Sports Network. We'll be back tomorrow. First game starting at 10.30 and running all, all the way until the 9 o'clock hour. So it'll be Bishop Laughlin in purple jerseys with its yellow lettering, St. Benedict's in the white uniforms with the maroon and black trim. Let's get things started here. Second half of play, here we go. Game nine of nine for day two on this Saturday night. Falling to the ground and now here comes St. Benedict's on the run. They give it back, but then get it back. Is stepping out of bounds clearly. No call. The, the referee missed it there. And it looks like they might just let him play here in the second half. Come on, Nick, too much. Push off. And there was a push off there, but instead they're going to call the traveling violation. So some sloppy play early on here to get the second half started. Both teams with a pair of turnovers as the Lions are gonna start instantly in that full court press. And a travel by the Lions and now a traveling violation by the Bees. So the score remains 29-17. Fresh off the halftime break. Kick out, corner three up. And finally, Bishop Laughlin getting a three to go. That was number five, Flowers getting the bucket. I will say, uh, it looks like my, my side of this table here is increasingly getting encroached. Uh, first it was storage for uh, the coach's water bottle, and now we got the uh, clipboard right next to me here. Uh, we'll see uh, if anything else goes on here, I don't know. <laughs> and a nice looking shot there by Nicholas Black, just couldn't get it to drop. Falls short off front iron and now ball back. And we got to remember, it's only a nine point game right now. 29 to 20, Bishop Laughlin doing a great job of staying in this one even though they have a distinct height advantage. And now numbers coming up for the Lions. Nice dish inside, pump fake, puts it up. Didn't get blocked, but uh, still no good on the shot. It looks like Zaba Bangala getting ready to check into the game. Big man at 6'8". Three-pointer taken. Won't go and a rebound by Bishop Laughlin. Trying to toy with the defender, now takes it inside, teardrop floater. Won't fall, an offensive rebound, goes out of bounds and will stay with the Lions. So the seven foot one wingspan, wingspan of Assad Mata Celaya, he'll check into the game. And now they're gonna take the time to adjust that shot clock once again. It's been a real uh, heated discussion with this <laughs> from 30 to 24 and now to 14. Now Bishop Laughlin will turn it over, so both coaches have to be frustrated early on here in the second half with the sloppy play. Yeah, actually we have been uh, even a decent sell there for the uh, shove, but we haven't been uh, seeing more turnovers by uh, St. Benedict here. In fact, uh, 
uh, something or the coach next to me said something to the effect of uh, oh my oh my goodness another turnover uh, not really gonna repeat that but uh, <laughs> yeah it's getting a little bit sloppier out here so 29 20 the score 525 left in the third dropping the defender and people falling all over the court now Bishop Laughlin's gonna pull it out and reset their offense. And really at this point, I don't understand why they just don't try to lob it every time to Hema Monier. He has about a, a good 10 inch height advantage on anyone else on the court right now. Just lob it up to him, let him make something happen down in the post for, for being seven foot against a team of this lacking in height. And, really hasn't had the game he should have. Well, remember, uh, yes, he's seven feet tall, but they still, Bishop Laughlin still has number 13 over there with his uh, arguably as wide wingspan over there. So uh, some hidden some hidden secrets here. As uh, as coach of uh, St. Benedict, he's uh, walked off. He's not in my ear as much right now. Walked off to yell at another player. Yeah, and to be honest, I wouldn't be happy with this team's performance either. They have a clear advantage both in height and athletic ability and basketball ability, but still they only lead by nine. They're letting this Lions team hang in there and going high off the backboard, avoiding the block. They got seven. Of Monir Hema. And now they're going to bring it down to a seven-point deficit, continuing to stay in this game and uh, make it a ball game. Coming fast on the break, and Monir unable to handle the pass. So yet another turnover for the St. Benedict's Bees. And 4.05 on the clock. Third period of play, 2020 MLK Showcase. And now coming back and hitting the three, Bishop Laughlin. We have ourselves a four point game. Now coming fast on the break. And a foul called, bailing him out there as it was an ill-advised shot. So going to the line for two will be number four out of the Kumbo Bakari. So Bakari will go to the charity stripe for two shots. His team's lead limited now just to four points with 345 remaining in the third. <laughs> So Bakari will hit the first shot, now making it a five-point lead for the Bees. We're going to get a lane violation on St. Benedict's number 23. And the big man just a little anxious down there on the block. So the three-point shooting getting a little bit active here for the Lions of Bishop Laughlin. See if they can continue to hit some. Gonna get a high pick and roll. Not too effective during the two, three zone, but uh, a good tactic to get that top ball handler open. Trying to get it down low in the paint and another turnover for the Lions. Tough take by St. Benedict's, gets his own follow. And now a foul called, so going back to the line will be the St. Benedict's Bees. So now going to the line will be number five for St. Benedict's, Zaba Bengala. So a bit of a discussion here right in front of us. So we'll hit them both the lead now at 7, 32 to 25. See if St. Benedict's can uh, get that lead back to where it was. I believe it was at 12 points at the greatest deficit for Bishop Laughlin. They got it as low as four, and now to seven. Gonna try the deep three from way downtown, sinks it, Taj Childs. 
You know, this is making me wonder, uh, did Bishop Laughlin like intentionally hide some of their greater secrets until the second half here? I know they uh, they they mentioned something along the line of uh, like drawing fouls for why they wouldn't start their number 13 with that seven foot wingspan. But uh, I wonder if there was even more secrets that they maybe had that they decided to uh, kind of hide out until now. And as we can see, it's just a four point differential. And another three. That three pointer off the mark and the follow coming in for Monir Hima. So his six point of the game for the big man. Driving baseline, looking for the kick out. Now here comes St. Benedict's on the run. A one on two, deflected away. Possession will stay with the bees. As everyone's getting into position. So here comes the inbounds, gonna try it off the back. It's a smart move, but you gotta execute it if you're gonna do it, and they do not. We're gonna get a tie up, jump ball position. Looks like it's gonna stick with the bees. And Coach Ed Gonzalez yelling, pressure, pressure. You best believe his team wants to win this game. They've been putting up a heck of a fight. And he's not letting up just because they have the distinct size advantage and a nice dish inside. And that's just too easy for Moni or Hima. You got to at least get a body on him down there. So we're down to a minute 50 left in the third period. An eight point lead, 36 to 28 for the St. Benedict's Bees. Passing up on the corner three, driving inside, now kicking it back out, gonna pull from the top of the key. And Childs can't get it to go. Kick out pass, now St. Benedict's resetting their offense. Going back inside to Bangala, nice move. Spinning around his right shoulder and Dropping the bucket now a 10 point lead. And now losing control of the, the dribble and a backcourt violation. So we saw a little bit of a streak there for the lines of Bishop Laughlin, but they have definitely lost that momentum as the lead climbs back to 10 and a uh, foolish back over and back turnover gives it right back to the St. Benedict's Bees. Nice step through, put the shot up and draws the foul. So we're gonna go back to the line and stop the clock with 101 left in the third. And free throw time. So he's gonna hit them both. Getting things started tomorrow here at the MLK Showcase. We'll get things started with Glen Old County taking on Kiskey High School. We saw Kiskey put up a great fight uh, in the previous game. And then we see Vincent Tian versus Severn School. Chester versus Bishop Laughlin. West Allegheny versus Erie McDowell. National Kristen versus Math, Civics, and Science. Woodland Hills versus Bethel Park and Bishop Walsh versus the Carolina Basketball Academy at 7.30 to finish things off. So that is the playbill for Sunday. A lot of great matchups, definitely excited for some more of the nation's top basketball talent to be joining us here at Woodland Hills High School. And now we're gonna get a timeout called by Bishop Laughlin, stopping the clock once again as we have just 36.1 seconds left on the game clock and five left on the shot clock.
So it's just going to be a 30 second timeout here from Woodland Hills High School. 40 to 28, the lead for St. Benedict's High School. Travis Newton with Ken Abaka. And Ken, it's been a great day of basketball. It's unfortunate we have to end it with a, such a lackluster game like this, even though Bishop Laughlin has been uh, making a nice little push in this game. But uh, you really can't beat the energy from that previous game. Two Whippeal teams here at a Whippeal High School, and they really uh, set the stage pretty high tonight. Absolutely, absolutely. They they probably they they arguably were the best matchup of the evening, arguably. And now the jump stop, and then he went without a dribble, so it's going to be a traveling violation. So another turnover for the Bees gives it right back to the lines of purple and gold. So working at top of the perimeter, going to hold for the last shot as we just have 10 seconds left in the third. Kick out, corner three, now gives it right back. Rises above the defense, takes the shot, an air ball, but it doesn't matter. Stepped out of bounds beforehand. So instead, it'll be St. Benedict's getting the last shot as we count it down from three. Rising up is Njai from half court. Tosses it off the backboard and won't get it to go. So that'll be the end of the third quarter. As we head to the fourth, it's a 40 to 28 lead for the St. Benedict's Bees over the Bishop Laughlin Lions. So we're gonna go ahead and take it to a short break and bring you right back here to the Roxamore Sports Network for the fourth quarter action. things happen to good people. Accidents, serious injuries, or even death. When they do, families call Frank Walker Law, where we fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Hard-hitting representation when you need it the most. A real law firm getting real results. Welcome back to the Roxamore Sports Network. Travis Newton here alongside Ken Abaka for the final game of the Saturday night premiere game. Between the St. Benedict Bees and the Bishop Laughlin Lions. 40 to 28 as we have just eight minutes left to decide the winner in this one. We have a tie for the leading scorer for St. Benedict's. We have two players with eight, including number 23, the seven footer Monir Hima, and number four, Ada Dekumbo Bakari. And then on the side for Bishop Laughlin, the leading scorer with seven, number one, Taj Childs. We've seen him. Hit a pair of threes here in the second half. Showing off some nice shooting by the point guard. Childs not in the game right now for the Lions. Gonna fake the pass, take the three, and banks it home. The bank open at 10.38 p.m. here in Western Pennsylvania. And now we're gonna get a 30 second timeout as we're back to a, to a nine point game. So we're currently uh, we're currently in the middle of a timeout, and uh, one thing that this coach ended up saying was to uh, tell his players, some of his players, to tell one specific player about something that he's been doing incorrect on this uh, on this on this court so far. But even more interesting is that um, it's 7:43 left in the game, and it was just 17 seconds into this quarter that the coach called a timeout. Something he's not happy about, and he's not going to be happy with that. Some great defensive pressure. Wanting a foul, but now they're gonna get the two on one. The scoop layup gets it to go. And we're back to a seven point game. And Ken, I actually just thought about something that I learned from my research. A, a notable alumni for the St. Benedict's team, R.J. Smith, or J.R. Smith, sorry, uh, NBA champion. 
Oh, no with way. the Cleveland Cavaliers, a, uh, an alumni of St. Benedict's. Regarded as one of the most swaggy men in the NBA. <laughs> Got his swag started at St. Benedict's in Newark, New Jersey. Well, that's actually uh, that's good for him, and then also good for this coach here. Uh, he's very heated, but in a way that gives him a little bit more justification because he's like, I'm a I'm a championship making coach right here. Don't get me wrong, he has had his blunders with the Cleveland Cavaliers, but um, are we gonna talk about yeah. that one? <laughs> but still, still a champion at heart. <laughs> As we still have a game here, it was 7:08 and a seven-point lead for St. Benedict's. They lead 40 to 33. And a lot of stoppages in play here, which are really unnecessary. But now going inside to Hema, kick out, three. A long three at that and a good box out to get possession for the Lions of Bishop Laughlin. Pull up jumper, and that brings it now to a five point game for the Lions. And you can tell this St. Benedict's team really overlooked their opponent, both metaphorically and physically, as they have really just not come out to play for the distinct advantages they have, but what Bishop Laughlin lacks in height, they make up for in heart, as they've just been playing a fantastic game today against this taller and more experienced St. Benedict's team. And they also make up for it in reach. That's true. That seven foot wingspan player, he is back on the, on the court right now. So they're gonna take some time with this possession, a big shot here, the floater won't get it to go as the buzzer sounds on the shot clock. So possession going back to the Bees and they're just hounding them in the backcourt and they will draw the foul. Oh. As we're trying to figure out where here. the ball's going. It will be St. Benedict's ball, sideline inbounds deep into the backcourt. 6.04 remaining, five point game, 40 to 35. And bringing it up is Barra and Jai. Wanted the pick and roll, now they bring it into Bengala. He gets fouled hard on the arm and now will go to the charity stripe for a pair of free throws. And we are, looks like free throws will be free throws for Bengala. Number five here, Zaba Bengala, a 6'8 senior. This is a senior dominated team for Bishop Laughlin. And that free throw is good. So that'll push the lead to six now after he splits the pair for St. Benedict's 41-35. Just over five minutes remain. Nice take inside, but lost control. And here comes St. Benedict's on the run. They have numbers, but just out of control. Njai gonna go up and get fouled again. So these Bishop Wa or sorry, Bishop Laughlin Lions have no regard for how long we've been here. They say we wanna stay just a little bit longer. They'll stop the clock with another foul. <laughs> And once again, the St. Benedict Bees will miss the first free throw. And Jai at the line right now, he has seven points on the day. So splitting the pair once again brings the lead to seven, 42-35. And now we're gonna get an offensive foul. Just lowering the shoulder there and bulldozing over the opposing players so the bees back with the ball. So it'll be number 15, Christopher Peters checking in. And number 13, Asad Matasalaya will find his way back onto the bench. 
little bit of a, a sell there by number one of uh, Bishop Laughlin twice there. It's Did not going to get him the Grammy, but <laughs> he made the nomination, so. Is that a Grammy or a Razzie that he won the nomination for? The Golden Raspberry Awards, they're the, generally the worst of stuff. Had a chance for the kick out three, but wanted to keep himself a three on two break. He, he, did he just try and fake that even for just a strip? Like, he come did. on. People are not going to fall for that one. And his coach very upset with him. He's telling him, score the ball. Don't worry about the show. Just put it in the hoop. As this team definitely still has a chance to make it back into this one. We've seen him go on a couple of runs. Five minutes left and a foul called. It'll be on number four for Bishop Laughlin. And it's looking like uh, people are getting upset at, uh, at each other on this team, on the Bishop Laughlin. Um, two players, number five and number zero, just went and basically yelled at number four. And young number, number four is even basically being yelled at by his coach here. Uh, looks like none of the coaching staffs on either team are really pleased with the performances going on so far. Oh, I'm not pleased with it either. The stop in the clock is not okay. But Bengala, he's going to hit the free throw, adding to his score total. Bengala now with six points. And make it seven as he hits them both. Zaba, watch your man, Zaba. So St. Benedict's, they've been in a 2-3 zone for the majority of the night. Now they're going to kind of get into a box and one defense. Ball on the floor, fight for it, and out comes the Bees with the ball. They have numbers once again, full head of steam, puts it up, and the bucket will go, absorbing contact and getting the deuce. And we're back to an 11 point lead for St. Benedict's. And 420 remaining. Working it around the perimeter, corner three, puts it up and gets the bucket to go. And just when you think St. Benedict's is gonna pull away, the Bishop Laughlin Lions get themselves right back in it. Going up high to Bengala, a nice assist from around the perimeter. And we're gonna get another timeout here by Bishop Laughlin. So we'll go to a short break and bring you right back to the action here on the Rocks and More Sports Network. So we bring you back to the action here on the Rocks and More Sports Network. 48 to 38, a 10 point lead as the Lions are gonna roll it in to start their offensive possession. It'll be agent zero, Maurice Doby bringing it up. This team has been scratching and clawing all night. They've got it within four at the closest and 12, the greatest separation in points as that NBA three is way off the mark. And here comes the bees as that's tipped out of bounds. And we're having a little conversation with the statistician for the St. Benedict bees. And he was telling us that they recently took on the number one team in New Jersey and came out with the win. So I definitely think this is a case of St. Benedict's playing down to the competition. And because it, it has not been a pretty night for this team. They only have 48 points. 
And with the talent they possess, they should they should have easily put up 100 in this game, if I'm being completely honest. Yeah, looking at, at least looking at the size, size comparison here. Like, these guys, they do look like they'd be a bit bigger. They look, they are bigger, yeah. and they look like they'd be more athletic. And so, uh, yeah, not, 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 not exactly the kind of delivery that... Uh, that the customer wanted. And we're also informed that Tristan Thompson, another member of the Cavaliers and still a member there, was also a member of the St. Benedict Bees. So a pretty rich alumni base for this team from Newark, New Jersey. They sit currently with a record of eight and two as that ball dribbles out of bounds once again, as we're just under three minutes left here in the fourth period. You got to give it to the coaching staff for the Bishop Laughlin Lions. They believed in their team throughout. They're continuing to coach them, continue to be hard on their players because they expect to win this game. And realistically, they still have a chance, only down 10 with two minutes left. Coming up with the right hand and missing it again. And just more and more reasons to uh, upset Coach Mark Taylor. His team just does not have their heads in this game. Now drawing the foul once again will send the beat or sorry send the Lions to the line for a pair. It's now four team fouls on the Bishop Law or sorry on the uh, Saint Benedict's bees. And checking back in Dorde Mitrovic, the six seven senior. to say uh the the coach uh coach of the bees here mark taylor um i just saw him crack a smile for the first time as uh number 23 was jogging off of the court so two two minutes and 30 seconds remaining here in this game they get it to bangala now going inside going at the defender trying to force contact and a strong rebound kick back out to the corner And really a discombobulated offense right now for the Bees. And they're trying to pull it out and hold, but Bishop Laughlin is not going to let that happen. Kick to the corner, puts up the three, and sinks it. 53 to 40 now the score. Uh, St. Benedict's is starting to secure this win. Trying to answer back with a three of his own. Can't get the soft roll. Now coming back on the offensive side, gives it up, and the left-handed layup is good. I was worried for a moment that one was going to uh, end up turning out a little bit sloppy, but uh, it did not happen, luckily. And now we're going to get another foul called. It'll be number one, Taj Childs. He's going to go to the stripe for two. He has seven points on the day. Maurice Doby, the leading scorer for the Lions with 11 points. Childs will miss the first shot. Just a minute and a half left here from Woodland Hills High School, day two of the second annual MLK Stand Against Violence Showcase. Here comes Bangala on the break. Dishes it off to Njai and a very aggressive take to the hoop, fought through contact and secured the bucket. Now 57 to 41, a 16 point lead just like that for St. Benedict's and they're, they're starting, starting to show what they're truly capable of. Did and you see a foul, foul there? And once again, stopping the clock. So once again, it'll be the Lions going to the charity stripe. This time, number five, Jalen Flowers. Guys, I want to run jersey. 
Flowers sinks the first shot. And now the bees pushing the pace once again. They're going to go ahead and pull it out as we approach the final minute of play here from Woodland Hills High School. They're trying to get into an offensive set pulling the three-pointer and now getting his own rebound. Gonna try a corner three now and buries it. Ada Takumbo Bakari hitting the three and now the Lions gonna try a three of their own. In and out, no good. And a rebound to the Bees. Going up once again with the left hand. So padding the stats a little bit here and we're gonna get another timeout to substitute. And we are currently in, uh, I, oh, I can't believe it. Uh, our DJ here definitely has a sense of humor here playing the Jeopardy, uh, Final Jeopardy theme song. Um, <laughs> I will say, have you been watching Jeopardy lately? Uh, I have not. But uh, I know, uh, unfortunately, Alex Trebek is uh, suffering from an illness. You know, correct? he's still here, though. Yeah, he's Alex still here. is he's still here, and strong. he's still kicking. And uh, they still have a bit of a sense of humor in Jeopardy because um, one, I, I was saying, I saw on Twitter uh, a little bit of like a Jeopardy highlight. That's kind of even a thing now. Um, they had one like answer sort of answer question, and basically the response was, "What is OK Boomer?" And right. <laughs> that, if you, if you know what that is, and um, that's basically like today's almost meme in two words right there. Uh, so Jeopardy, they have a good sense of humor, and it looks like our building DJ here has a bit of a sense of humor too. And uh, if the DJ, I know he's not lit, we can see him from over here. Uh, he, he, he can't hear us, but uh, thanks for the sense of humor that you provided for us here. So 21.9 remain, and yet another foul will stop the clock despite a 20-point lead for St. Benedict's. And I believe with that, we can go ahead and wrap things up here on the Rocks and More Sports Network, the final game of day two from Woodland Hills for the MLK Showcase. If you're still with us, we thank you for sticking around. St. Benedict's uh, will come out of this one with the win. And just a quick uh, rundown of the scoring. So, uh, so St. Benedict, they uh, number 12 scored 14 points. Number four scored 13 points. Number two scored 10 points. Number five scored 11 points. That's currently who, who they have on the court. And uh, number 33 is the only one on St. Benedict who has zero points on the night. Meanwhile, with, uh, with Bishop Laughlin, number five has 11 points. Number one has eight points. 15 and 14, they both have zero points. And number two has five points. As we're approaching the final five seconds of this game and of the night, a three, air ball, and that's it. So once again, we'd like to thank you for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow here on the Roxmore Sports Network.